When you're cleaning your carbon steel and cast iron after cooking, how can you be sure that you're not damaging your seasoning? Hi, I'm Jed. This is Cook Culture. I get asked all the time with customers in our stores and with people online, YouTube comments, about how do people know that they're not damaging their seasoning after cooking. People tell me that they use chain mail a lot of the time or they're using some sort of a you know, semi-abrasive sort of scrubber and they see marks on their seasoning and they feel that they're stripping their seasoning off. So this video is about what you should expect when you're cleaning your carbon steel and cast iron after you finish cooking. Okay, so I got a lineup of different pans here. I've got five, one, two, three, four, five, five different pans I'm gonna show you here in a sec that are all in different states. And they're gonna talk about what they look like when you're done cooking. This is probably, your pan is gonna be similar to one of these pans that I have in front of me. And what each one of them means, what the approach to clean them is. What you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you do is get your pan surface as smooth as you possibly can. That's the goal at the end of cleaning, that you have a super smooth pan all around. Your fingers are smooth on the surface and you don't have any bumps. And what it is, carbon, the carbon buildup. So you got food buildup what can happen in the corners particularly, um, but you may have bits and pieces stuck throughout the pan, you wanna get those off. And you can use chain mail, and you can use a, uh, a nylon scrubber, you can use uh, just a regular uh, bristle scrubber, whatever you want, um, as long as it, it breaks that down. But what a lot of people get worried about is that they are stripping their seasoning off as they're working away on that carbon. And that can totally happen, but it may not happen exactly the way that you think. So the color that you have in a pan, so this color here, there is what is called carbonization in there. So there's carbon buildup and there's carbonization that is in the seasoning. So the seasoning that is predominantly a seasoning oil is what a lot of people will use. Some people do use lard and different sorts of oils. Um, but the seasoning that you're doing is creating a barrier over the pan to keep them oxidizing. That's goal number one of seasoning. And that is really the purpose of seasoning. Creating a nonstick surface is the benefit of a good quality seasoning. And as you cook with a pan, or you season more often, the pan will become kind of a golden, bronzy, brown color, and it will darken slightly over time as the oils inside there, or the fat inside there, starts to carbonize and it starts to brown. And that is how you want a pan to end up looking. But some pans can get darker and more gnarly. And I'm gonna go by these one by one, but I'm gonna give you a quick close up of this guy here. So that is a very, very, very dark pan with quite a bit of carbon buildup on it. And what happens there as food gets stuck on is that you actually have layers of carbonated food and not just seasoning. And you wanna make sure that you have a lot more seasoning, brown seasoning that you have burnt on food, or you're gonna have blacking and flaking. Uh, and it will, the, the food will dry and it'll start to peel off the pan as you scrape or clean or whichever, and you get flaking and the pan starts to come apart. So we're gonna go through each one of these pans here and talk about the states of them and the process and how we can stay away from having too much carbon buildup but also what happens is if we take each one of these to the sink and try to clean with them, as we're using something like a chainmail scrubber that is becoming more and more and more popular, how do we put the right sort of effort into it and not strip the seasoning off, but also get the pan clean? So it's a bit of a balance because what I see a lot of time when people send me pictures of the pans is it being a little too delicate and not taking the carbon off. And so it starts to get that food build up. So you can kind of, be a little harsher with your pans than you actually think when it comes to cast iron and carbon steel if you have a really rock solid seasoning underneath that's been built up really well and I have other videos that address exactly that. If your seasoning is quite soft from the get-go you're gonna find that even regular cooking sometimes can just strip your seasoning off but in exactly that what does that look like? So stripping your seasoning off when you have a pan and you've cooked something and you've taken some of the brown off have you taken the seasoning off? 
Brown isn't actually seasoning. And I've actually made a video spe specifically on that that addresses that question of what seasoning really is. And a blackened pan isn't so much just a seasoned pan. Seasoning can be actually translucent. And you can have a first seasoning on a pan and it's just completely clear. Seasoning is polymerized oil on a pan. So it's, a, it's oil that is bonded together to protect that pan and become a hardened surface. And it will carbonize over time as it gets heated and heated and heated, but it doesn't actually reflect the seasoning. It just will brown. So if you are cooking, this gets kind of nuanced. If you are cooking and you've peeled something off and you're like, oh no, I've peeled the seasoning off and you've peeled some browning off, you may have just taken some carbonization off and your seasoning may be in totally fine intact underneath, not a problem. It may look translucent, but be totally fine. So optically, it's kind of making, playing trick on you, but actually technically, it's totally fine. So I'm gonna do a, a quick little rundown of each one of these pans and talk about the state that they're in. Then we're gonna take them to the sink and we're going to give them a scrub with the chainmail and kind of see the effects of what happens with that chainmail. So that hopefully, you know, there's enough of pans here of these five that everybody's watching will address if you have any one of these problems or if you're like, hey, yeah, my pan is in perfect shape. Everything I'm doing is totally fine. So here we go. Let's talk about these pans. Okay, so here's our first pan. This is a matte furs pan. And this has about four or five layers of seasoning. It's had in the oven and it has been on the stovetop. It's had some cooking in it, but not a lot. Uh, it's a relatively new pan and it's in really nice shape. So that is a good looking young pan. Then we move on. This is a larger matte fur pan. This pan here, a little bit older. It's had quite a bit more cooking in it. This pan needs a post seasoning, but it is perfectly seasoned. It's in great shape. A lot of people would be like, oh, it's got no seasoning on it. It's, it needs to be seasoned. This pan is totally seasoned. Why? Because it's not rusting. Seasoning is what keeps our pans from rusting. Building a solid seasoning over time will give us more protectant and stop things from getting damaged from acidic foods and so on and so forth. But this pan here with one kind of post cooking seasoning layer that it needs will be totally fine and will look a lot more like that pan in its sheen. So this pan is in totally good shape. It's smooth, it has no carbon buildup or very, very little, um, but no kind of chunkiness on it. And it's great. If your pan looks like this, it could do with a post seasoning, but generally it's an awesome shape. So then moving on, this is a much more used pan. This is an 11 inch Dubai pan. So as you can see over time, this pan has been heavily used, it's got quite a lot of carbon buildup around the edging, which is not a big deal. Down below, it is Beautifully smooth, little bit of carbon pulled up, but very, very small in the edges. But it is generally a very nice seasoned pan. Uh, it's got a nice sheen to it, it's got a nice color to it, and everything is fine. So this pan here works beautifully well as is. So if your pan looks like this, you're in great shape. So moving on, here is a pan in <laughs> pretty dire shape. So this pan here, has had quite a bit of abuse. There's a full little chunk that's kind of peeled right off from too much heat, bad seasoning, too much heat. And it's just got cooked on, caked on seasoning or, or carbon food all over it. It was, it, it probably is well seasoned on the bottom, but it has just been abused and abused and abused. And by what I mean abuse is too much heat and not good maintenance, not good cleaning, not good post seasoning, just kind of hot heat and use and use and use and use. And it just, this pan needs a lot of help. So we're gonna be scrubbing this one down with the chain mail in the, uh, in the sink here in a minute and see what, what that means, what that looks like. Cause we're taking some of that carbon down just with a chain mail, what does it look like? And you know, the question, are we damaging the seasoning? <laughs> the seasoning here is not something to save. This is, this just needs to be stripped down. You gotta get some of this carbon build up off because it's just gonna be a sticky mess all the time. So the next example that we have is a just cooked with pan. So this pan here had some fibrous food cooked in it uh, just even today. It's got a bunch of carbon that's left on it. This pan will end up looking like this pan if this pan is not maintained. So you can also see over time, this pan has had a lot of abuse and a lot of use, a lot of carbon built around the edges. 
and it's a great pen in good shape underneath, but it cannot be left like this. So we've got to make sure that this guy gets seasoned. So we are going to now get these guys to the sink. All right, so here we are at the sink. This pan here, of course, looks fine. So like, we're not gonna have to clean it, but we wanna just give you an example of what happens when we put chain mail onto a pan like I would be cleaning it. So I'm just putting this chain mail on there like I'm cleaning it. And that seasoning is like so. So I'm not putting a lot of effort because I probably wouldn't need to on there. So I would give it a scrub with my chain mail and it looks great. Right, so there's example number one. This guy here is gonna be exactly the same. It needs a post seasoning, but we would get around it and I'd put a little bit of effort into the corner and scrub it down kind of all around. And it's exactly the same. So now I'd put that onto the heat. I would evaporate all of that water and I would post season that pan. Okay, so this guy here has there's a little bit of carbon on there so like it's, it's like i can feel a couple little black spots so what i could do is just get the chain nail work those spots get those down just a bit and everything on there is perfectly fine it feels smooth to the touch right so again nice and nice and simple yeah, that's great. So, the pan that needs the work. Okay, so if your pan looks like so. Texture all around. <laughs> this is the one that I really wanted to show because this is where people are like, oh, I'm taking my seasoning off when I'm using my chain mail. And this is where I'm gonna put a bunch of elbow grease in here and we're gonna take this off, but we're not going to take the seasoning down and even if we get close to the metal, we can build that seasoning, a better seasoning back than being afraid that you're losing your seasoning because this is just carbon buildup. So let's get this one done. A little bit of water. What I could also have done here is I've heated this up first on the stovetop and got this all warm, but I'm trying to do everything kind of equal here. Okay, this is nicely stuck on here. So it's taking a bunch of elbow grease. This pan was not maintained for a long time very well. So I've got to put quite a bit of elbow grease, but I can feel the thick stickiness to it as I'm going through this surface. So let's see if I can get some hot water on here. Cause it is, it is on there. This is definitely chunky. And sticky. Now I've kind of gone through this top dry carbon layer. And when I put my palm on there, you can see it. My, see all my hands here? That sticky blackness, that gummy carbon stickiness, that is not a quality seasoning in any which way. Right? If you can get black on your fingertips from your pan like that, then you don't have a hard seasoning. You've got soft carbon. So I'm just going around and around and around and I'm going hard to get deep because I'm taking you know months or years of built on carbon off this pan in quite a brutal rudimentary way uh, another way easy way to do this that might even be a better approach being how stubborn this gumminess is is to boil this in white vinegar and that will strip this pan down to bare metal very quickly. But you're gonna be at bare metal. And what I'm trying to do here is get ourselves just through the carbon and then just layer up 
on the non-sticks seasoning that's down below. But it is not being very friendly. It's coming, but it's pretty aggressive. It's gummy and stuck on there. This is not hardened seasoning. This is just gumminess. So I'm gonna put some elbow grease into this and we're gonna fast forward this a little bit. Okay, so we've got some carbon staining here now. This here, it's a tiny, tiny bit of texture. I could continue working on that, but it's really not gonna matter because it's just kind of staining into, it's smooth, 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 smooth. So that's just, that's fine. This I've gotten down, you know, quite bare. Um, that's what we're gonna build back up on because what was there was not quality. So we're gonna start building back up. That took me, a little bit of time. I used Barkeeper's Friend on there uh, because I needed to really strip that down. It was not going very well for me, just trying to do it by hand. Uh, well, I did it by hand, but without help of a, of a cleanser. So Barkeeper Friend, I used on there. That's taken it down. It's quite stripped. So we need to now baby this back to a good space. That isn't gonna take long. Um, there's still some seasoning. This pan is smooth. It's not a dry metal. As I talked about using vinegar to boil this, if I had simmered this in vinegar, once it's dry, it's like dry, dry, dry. It's very bare metal and it starts to oxidize almost immediately where there's no oranging flash rusting um, that's happening in here. We still actually have oil on the pan, but we've just taken a ton of the carbon off. So that is going to go back onto the stove. Okay, so our next pan is the one, this one, this is, how that one would have gone. So this guy here who has food built up on him, if this was just kind of mediocrely cleaned in a very simple way, you're gonna get the problem that we just dealt with. But here we just go to the sink. We've got chainmail. This should have been cleaned when it was hot off the stove earlier and not left to cool or had gone into some running water. Um, that happens too, you can just get some water and let it sit and soak but and with the chain mail I can feel any of the little stuck on bits and around and around I go I get any of the little carbony bits off there and I'm going hard I'm pushing on this pan I am not taking it easy I'm not being gentle with the chain mail. And I've got everything off. And that pan is now perfectly clean, right? Easy, easy, easy. It's smooth, baby smooth all over. It's greasy, there's still seasoning on it. It's not like greasy, it's just slippery because my hands are a little bit wet. It's not actually greasy, greasy. Um, it's gonna post season beautifully and be 100% ready. So let's get back to the stove and do some post seasoning. Okay, so here's pan number one. This is the matte fur, a little bit dry, just need the post seasoning, but the, the pan is in really great shape. It can, will continue to brown and brown and brown as it goes, um, but you know we haven't done a lot of high heat cooking with this pan. It doesn't have a lot of fattiness done to it, but it's seasoned just fine and it works totally great. And here's this pan that needed a lot of help. This was a very carbonated pan, really nasty shape. The seasoning that was on here wasn't seasoned anymore. It was just built on carbon buildup. And this here that's on it, the blackness, is just some staining. It's not really a, a chunky carbon that's not going to constrict and flake. I can season right into that and that's not a problem. These were some really, really stuck on spots that if I really wanted to, I could have worked harder to get those off, but it's not gonna be necessary for what we're doing. So, and then this was the pan that we use for cooking lunch in today. It was the one that I scrubbed last. It's in great shape, but it's dry. 
it needs a post seasoning. It could totally get put away like this. This is not a problem. It is seasoned. It's not going to rust, but it's not going to be an ideal shape for next use. So we're going to post season all three of these. So we're going to use our seasoning paste and we are going to hit each one of these guys and then cook them for a few minutes. Okay, so I'm preheating my little cloth there. I'm going to get it into the cook culture seasoning wax and I'm going to go to the pan. I'm just going to put it around. No need to create some smoke there. All we're doing is cooking that seasoning. And that's all we're doing. So we'll go back a little bit more, just like shoe polish. This guy here, I'm gonna go around. And now we're just gonna let that cook. It's already starting to get a tiny bit of golden in the middle. It's already happening because there, there was still seasoning on there. The pan was seasoned. I didn't strip it completely. That's why I like the method I had for cleaning it. Barkeeper's, barkeeper's friend can strip it right down, but mostly I just didn't scrub hard enough to go right, 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 right through it. So we're gonna get a little bit more seasoning paste. And we're gonna hit this guy here. Just give him a bit of a sheen. Okay. And there we go. So those guys have their seasoning paste on them. And now they're just gonna cook away until they're not wet looking anymore. They're just gonna go a tiny bit dull and then that's polymerizing the oil. So that'll take a few minutes because we're not using a very high temp. Nice low temp. I'm not looking for smoke. If it starts to smoke just a tiny bit, great, that's fine. But smoke is not my indicator of seasoning, right? Same thing with color. Just because it's going brown or black does not mean that it's seasoned. It's an indicator of seasoning but seasoning is polymerizing oil. Carbonization happens within seasoning, within, sorry, within polymerizing oil, but it is the polymerization that we're looking for, and that is a, a basically a first layer that is gonna be a transparent sort of layer. Uh, if we decide to burn the oil and carbonize the oil, that isn't actually seasoning. Seasoning is polymerization, and carbonization is burning oil. They're two separate things. So we're just gonna let these guys cook away for a few more minutes, and then they're gonna completely cool and we'll be done. Okay, so we just finished up. We've got a nice sheen on all these pans. They're fully polymerized. They cooked for, mm, I don't know, eight or nine minutes, something like that. Just kind of cooked away. So they are nice and sheened, and they're just gonna sit and cool and that's great. So that is how we want our pans to look when they're done, right? So a nice shiny sheen to it. And that's fantastic. These guys are all in perfect shape and ready to go for the next use. They'll just cool out, harden up, and everything's great. So I hope that helps you understand the effort that you can put into cleaning your pans and when they need some elbow grease and when they just don't. And using a chainmail scrubby or something like chainmail works on a really good seasoning. So if your pans are well seasoned, like you saw on a pan like so, I you know, pushed on that with, this, with the chainmail. I did not damage the seasoning at all whatsoever. So any questions, any comments, please throw them below. Thanks so much.